Okay, so welcome back, everyone. It is 2026. So I want to give you guys the full 2026 Network Engineer Roadmap, the final one, the one that's actually going to help you become a network engineer in 2026. I became a network engineer back in 2021, but I wanted to give you guys the full guide on how to do it. So let's go ahead. With that being said, let's go ahead and dive in and show you exactly how to go into this. So the first thing you have to focus on is tunnel vision, number one. The, 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 full, the number one thing before we continue on is tunnel vision. A lot of times you're going to hear people saying, go into cyber, go into cloud, go into data. You're going to see all these fields in tech. As long as you dial in and focus on specifically network engineering, you're going to be in a way better position than everyone else. And I can almost guarantee you this is way better than doing anything else is tunnel vision and, and commitment and, and sticking to it because it is going to be a hard road. It's not going to be difficult, but I can almost guarantee if you follow everything I tell you to do, you're going to be in a better position. So number one, the number one thing is what are you, what's your starting point? Your starting point is the number one thing that you will have to look at is where are you starting, right? Are, do you have a college degree? Do you have any certifications? What do you have? So I want to come from the perspective if you have nothing. If you have absolutely nothing and you want to become a network engineer, the first thing you have to focus on is acquiring the skill sets that a network engineer does on the job. That is the number one thing, acquiring the skills that a network engineer does. You may be wondering, Yo, Wally, how do I get those skills that a network engineer does on the job? Very, very simple. The only thing you need to focus on is f talk to other network engineers. And you may be wondering, oh, I don't know who, I don't know any network engineers. Go on LinkedIn, reach out to network engineers and say hi. Is that hard to do? That's what I had to do. That's the easiest way to, to just meet people. It's uncomfortable. I've done it. I've reached out to people and I was able to even speak to a director of network engineering just from doing this. So anyone who tells you I can't, I don't know any network engineers is because you're not putting yourself out there. And that is one key area that you're missing out on that is going to be criti critical for you guys to be able to succeed to become a network engineer. So now diving into the projects and I'm going to, I'm not going to gatekeep. I'm going to tell you what projects to work on and all that stuff. But in terms of obtaining the skill sets, the skill sets you need to focus on, the main skill sets are going to be project skills. So building out a full-fledged network that that has multiple things with firewalls, with access points, with, with you know, inter-VLAN routing, with, with routing with, between different autonomous systems using BGP, as well as, you know, OSPF routing within the same network. Those kind of things are really important for you to be able to build out all in, inside of one network. And you may be wondering, oh, this is confusing. I don't know any of this stuff. There's a lot of free resources. Go online and watch those particular videos. You can watch some of the videos on my channel, you can watch other, other channels, but I would focus on obtaining those skill sets of building out projects. Number two is going to, I want you to focus on building and working on troubleshooting projects. Troubleshooting projects are the most impactful way to become a network engineer because troubleshooting is basically fixing something that is broken on the network. So the best way of doing this is find something that's broken, like have someone, you know, this is the best way I like to do it is have someone build out the network Find a network engineer who can mess up and make some slight figure configuration changes and then go ahead and try to fix that network. That's troubleshooting right there. Very, very simple. But the whole point of that is to improve your troubleshooting skill sets. A lot of the time when, when I talk to people, when they say, oh, I, you know, I can't find a job, I ask them, have you troubleshooted before? They said, I've never have. 70% of the job of a network engineer, you're pretty much troubleshooting. You're, most of the time, the network has already been built out. You have to learn how to troubleshoot and how to fix a particular network. So work on obtaining those actual skill sets because those skill sets are going to matter once we go into the interview phase of, of networking. Because at the end of the day, getting a job is one thing, but learning how to get a job is another. So I want you to focus on learning how to get the job, which is learning the skill sets and learning how to interview, which we'll get to very soon. So now the skill sets. You've, you've, done, you've done the projects, you've done the labs, and I'm really big on implement, implementing. So doing the actual projects on a lab simulator, like on Package Tracer, all this stuff, right? Um, and then... Also getting learning the material. You could take a video course. You could take, you know, Jeremy IT Lab. There's a lot of free courses that you can take if you're interested. Learn those particular courses, in my opinion, and, and watch those videos. Those, that's going to also put you in a much better position to succeed, in my honest opinion. So now you've learned the theory, and then you've done the projects, and you, now you have the, the skill sets. Now that you have the skill sets, the next thing I would also focus on is just getting your CCNA out the way if you if you have time. It's not necessary. You can become a network engineer without the CCNA 100%. I've helped multiple students become, have, get CCNAs and, and and some students without CCNAs get jobs. So you don't need a CCNA. Anyone who tells you you have to get a CCNA to become a network engineer is not true. Although I did have a CCNA, but I've helped other people who did not have CCNAs land jobs as a network engineer. So anyone who tells you that, nonsense. But going into 
how to essentially um, get that certification, very, very simple. Use either Boson or use any testing bank that you can find. It's the CCNA is all about passing an exam. It's that simple. There's a couple of labs and it's multiple choice questions. That's it. And I'm, I'm going to tell you this, and this is something that you guys just have to know. When you get a job after you get your CCNA, you're probably only going to use 20% of the CCNA. So don't put all your eggs in terms of studying for the CCNA. Focus on passing the CCNA. Studying for the CCNA is one thing, passing is the other. And I'd focus on passing and then learning material somewhere else because the CCNA material... There's a lot of stuff that you're not going to use and a lot of fluff that you're going to be learning. And I don't want you to waste time, especially coming into 2026. You really have to take advantage. And it's already January. And I want you guys to focus on moving quick. Moving quick is one of the, the best ways to succeed. And instead of waiting, 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 and move quick, guys. You can get your CCNA in under three months. Why are you wasting time? Why haven't you scheduled that exam? Just go ahead and schedule it. Don't waste any more time. Do this after this, this, um, this video. So now you've gotten the skills. Now you've gotten your CCNA. Now you're wondering, yo, Wally, like, what do I do next? I have this, I have this. Now you should be focusing on practicing your interviewing skills. And this is it. Everyone who tells you to become a network engineer, oh, I need, a, I need to learn more. I'm not, ready, I'm not ready to become a network engineer. I have to do this. I have to... At the end of the day, guys, all you have to do to become a network engineer is actually get the skills, get some certifications if you want some, not necessary, but if you want. And then after that, interview. There's nothing more, th more than that, honestly. Anyone tells you more fluff, and like I said, the skills, you can learn as much as you want. That's not gonna negate your interviewing skills. And that's where you have to go in and do a bunch of mock interviews. You know, Talk to friends, have them interview, because at the end of the day, if you cannot pass a technical network engineering interview, there is nothing that, I'm, that you're gonna do in terms of the technical skills part of, of learning that's gonna help you pass, the, like that's gonna help you get the job, if that makes sense. For example, I know a lot of people, they know a lot of information. They've learned, they spent years and years learning, get certifications, all this stuff. But the number one thing they mess up on is they don't work on their speaking skills. Their speaking skills are just as valuable as their technical skills. And you may be wondering, how do I get those speaking skills? Talk out loud, go to speaking events, go to Toastmasters. There's certain things that you can do to improve your speaking skills because to be able to, pa get, an, to, be, to, to be able to get a job, you're going to have to go through the, the gauntlet of interviews. And those interviews are really just how well are you well how 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 good are you at speaking your technical skills and if you're not good enough at speaking your networking technical skills like i said you cannot just they they won't be able to hire you and that's the unfortunate truth i know a lot of people with ccmp who that cannot get jobs because of that so focus a lot of your time on not only the technical skills but also those soft skills that matter okay and then also building connections on linkedin is very very important <clears throat> As you're learning, as you're learning to become a network engineer, you should be connecting with other network engineers and also seeing what they do on the job. The reason I say this is it's important you do this because seeing what they do on the job is, is mission critical because it gives you the context of what a network engineer actually does. A lot of times people who, who don't, have, don't know anyone that's a network engineer will have no idea on what a network engineer actually does on the job and then will have no idea on how to actually you know, do the job. Because at the end of the day, fortunately for me, my uncle kind of taught me a little bit of what he does on the job as a network engineer. So that gave me a little bit of context of what to expect on the job as a network engineer. But still, there's a lot of things I didn't know. And getting that context is going to be mission critical for you to understand what is needed for the job. Because what's needed for the job as a network engineer is not the same as what's needed for, um, you know, what's needed for actually learning the, the skill sets of networking. Because it depends. It's all job specific and all that stuff. There's different types of jobs that you can expect, like network administrator, network engineer, network technician. But at the end of the day, most jobs ha ha use similar, you know, softwares, Jira, Secure CRT, uh, SolarWinds, all those kind of softwares, you're most likely going to use those softwares, okay? And maybe learning a little bit of those is also going to be important for you guys. Now that you've gotten, you know, your CCNA, and mentioned, I, I did not say CompTIA. I did not say Security Plus, I did not say any of those certifications because those certifications do not matter in terms of becoming a network engineer. And anyone who tells you they do, they don't. Because I've worked with their multiple network engineers, the CompTIA Net Plus just doesn't, doesn't really match well with the CCNA. So don't waste your time getting the Net Plus. And, I, and if you're, you know, the only justification is if your school is paying for it and it, you, know, you have no choice but to get it like a WG program. Besides that, don't waste your time on the CompTIA Net Plus, okay? So now that you got that out the way, you got your new CCNA, you got the skills, 
you practice your interviewing skills, you, then you just get to land a job. And that's the roadmap to, for 2026 on how to become a network engineer. There's nothing else more than that. If you focus on this exact roadmap, you're going to be in a way better position than 99% of the people. Everyone else, they're chasing certifications and more and more certifications and more learning. As opposed to you, if you follow this exact roadmap, you're focusing on the skill sets that matter. And you can, like I said, learn these skill sets, learn routing, learn you know, layer two, layer three, layer one, networking, all that important stuff. Networking is not complicated, guys. Just learn what a network engineer does. You can go through my channel. You can watch some of my videos there. I can pretty much explain exactly how to do it. And that's it. Don't waste your time on the details. Focus on the high-level concepts. Focus on how to do them and actually implement them on a real network. And once you do all that, and then you focus on your technical and soft skills and, and your technical speaking skills, you're golden, guys. You're absolutely golden. If you do that, you're going to be up ahead of 99% of the people. But if you guys need more help on how to become a network engineer or you just want to start your career in, in, with mentorship and want more fast track, I do have a program, so you can click the link in the description. It pretty much helps people kind of fast track into the field of network engineering. If that's something you're interested, go ahead and click the link below. If not, no worries. But if, I want to say thank you guys so much for uh, you know subscribing to this video. If you got subscribed, if you did subscribe, let me know if you did. But uh, if you guys liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you guys want to watch more like this, feel free to subscribe and, and continue on and hit the bell notification. And then also, if you do have any questions, go ahead and put it down in the comment section below. I'll try to respond to your comments. Um, with that being said, everyone, I do appreciate you guys' time and I hope you have a good rest of your day and peace.